Hey everyone, it's Denise and welcome back to Draw Curiosity. As you probably all know by now, I've spent the past few years completing my thesis in insect flight, and thus far the two prime uses of my ultra narrow expertise go towards this, and regaling anyone who cares to listen with niche facts about insect flight. So trust me, the latter is way more fun, so without further ado, here are five of my favourite facts about insect wings that you might not know about. Number 1. Sexual Dimorphism In biology, sexual dimorphism is where the two sexes within a species display different characteristics beyond their sexual organs. For instance, in many species, females are much larger than the males, and in many bird species, the males are much more colourful and ornamented compared to their female counterparts. These differences also extend to the wings of many insect species, as the male sex of several species use their wings to serenade and attract the females. For example, male fruit flies extend their wings and they vibrate them to generate a courtship song to increase the female's receptivity. However, my favourite example of sexual and natural selection in action comes from the oceanic field cricket Delogrilus oceanicus. As you know, male crickets rub their wings together to generate the infamous cricket sound to attract the females. Now, whilst the wings in male and female Drosophila are mainly different in size and possibly aspect ratio, in crickets their structure is completely different. The males use the plectrum on their left wing, which has lots of minuscule teeth, to rub against the file of their right wing, which is the hardened Cu2 wing vein, to generate the characteristic sound. They additionally have structures known as the harp and the mirror, which are resonators. However, when you're a noisy male cricket, you don't only draw the curiosity of female crickets, but also the attention of predators, and in the case of the oceanic field cricket, of parasites. There is a parasitoid fly, Ormia ochlasia, which uses the cricket song to locate the crickets and flick their eggs onto them. The larvae then burrow into the crickets, eventually killing them a week later when they emerge. How wonderful! And this has led to the evolution of a new form of male, which is completely silent, and it has a wing that more closely resembles that of a female. Of course, this protects them from the parasitoid fly as they can no longer be traced, but you might also be wondering how they attract the females instead. And the answer is they still rely on the singing males, which they too track down by listening out for them, but then they simply intercept any females passing by before they actually find the singing male. Isn't nature wonderful and sneaky? Number 2. The Pterostigma The Pterostigma is a small pigmented spot found close to the leading edge on the outer edge of the wing in some insect orders, such as Odonata, which are the dragonflies, Neuropterans, such as lacewings, Socoptera, the barkflies, Hemipterans, which are true bugs, and Hymenopterans, which are the bees, the wasps, and the ants. Even though at first glance it may seem insignificant, from an aerodynamic perspective the spot makes quite a substantial difference. The pterostigma is essentially a thick sclerotized mass which makes it relatively heavier than the surrounding bits of wing. Throughout the length of an insect wing, the torsion axis of the wing, which is the axis around which the wing twists lengthwise, lies ahead of the cordwise centre of mass, with the exception of the pterostigma, which brings the centre of mass closer to the wingtip. And the reason for this is that in gliding flight, where the wings aren't necessarily flapping, if the centre of mass is too far behind the torsion axis, wing flutter can occur at sufficiently high speeds. Flutter is quite a serious aeroelastic phenomenon, it's the phenomenon that took down the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in 1940, and is also very dangerous when it occurs in aircrafts. It is a self-excited oscillation of the structure of the aircraft, or in the case of the insects, of their wings, where the energy from the airstream is absorbed into the structure. At flight speeds beneath flutter speed, the oscillatory motions decay and they don't cause any further damage, but when the flutter speed is reached or even surpassed, the oscillations actually increase in amplitude and end up leading to massive structural failure. So as a result, aircrafts are rigorously tested for flutter and their structures are reinforced to protect them from reaching dangerous warping at the high speeds. That being said, I will say don't worry if you look out of an aircraft window and you see some wing bending, that is perfectly fine and normal, this is nothing like the levels of flutter that we're talking about here. And in the case of dragonflies, the pterostigma only takes up 0.1% of their mass, but enables them to increase their maximum gliding speed up to 10-25% to depending on the species, which demonstrates how a little bit of optimal engineering can make a huge difference to flight performance. Number 3. The Alula The Alula is a hinge flap found in the wing of Brachycerin flies. Brachycerin flies include flies such as hoverflies, houseflies, fruitflies, blowflies, but not flies such as mosquitoes and craneflies. The alula is controlled by one of the flight muscles, and although its effect is variable, it significantly changes the effect of the wing beak trajectory in flight, providing these flies with another way of altering their position and speed when they fly. 
Also, fun fact, this is actually the work of one of my supervisors. Number four, wing folding. Not all wings are created equally. You may have already noticed in the wings we've seen so far that they have a plethora of neat features which allow the insects to change the shape of the wing depending on their circumstances. One of my favourite extreme examples of wing deformation are insects who fold up their wings. For instance, beetles only have a single pair of wings, the front pair have hardened and been modified through evolution into elytra, and they actually serve to protect the hind wings which are folded up inside when they're not flying. Apart from their nifty folding mechanism, ladybirds can deploy their wings within a tenth of a second, which is actually faster than the blink of an eye. And that enables them to take flight quickly if endangered by any predators. But also, the process of folding them back up again, although it is considerably slower, is still relatively speedy. Rove beetles take it to the next level as their elytra is shortened and their wings fold asymmetrically, meaning that their folding mechanism to package them away is even more sophisticated. Earwigs, however, I think take the prize. They are the most impressive of the lot. Depending on the species, their wings when unfold can be 10 to 18 times greater in surface area than when tucked away, and they can unfold them with no muscle activation whatsoever. They achieve this with many resilient junctions present on their wings. Resilin is a rubber-like protein present in wing vein junctions and the joints in many insects, and it's extremely efficient at storing elastic energy. In dragonflies and bees, it aids with wing torsion during flight, but it also plays a crucial role in insects that engage in wing folding by allowing the wing to spring load and snap into different configurations when folded and unfolded. Understanding how insect wings fold and the properties of the materials in the wings actually has implications for the development of foldable electronics, such as storing and unfolding solar sails for satellites and space probes, or designing products such as compact tents. Number five, hairy wings. Last but definitely not least, insect wings are actually quite close to me when you look at them up close. They're kind of hairy and all of their hairs naturally have different functions. There are macrotrichia, which are large socketed hairs generally found on the wing veins. In the case of lepidopterans, which are butterflies and moths, and trichopterans, which are the callus flies, the macrotrichia are highly modified to be the colorful scales that cover their wings. There are also microtrichia, which are smaller and more irregularly scattered, and are thought to have a variety of functions. One of the main ones is they are thought to protect the wings from drops of moisture. The spacing and the direction of the microtrichia on the wings make them almost impermeable by drops of water, which land and are quickly guided off and away from the insect's body. The distribution of microtrichia also varies immensely across different species, and in species of beetle they are also known to play a role in helping to hold the wings that have been folded in place underneath the elytras. And finally, I want to give a special shout out to the hymenopterans, which comprise the bees, the wasps and the ants, as they have quite a few more hairy wing features. Firstly, most, if not all, of the winged hymenopterans have a row of hooked hairs known as distal hamuli, which are found on the leading edge of the hindwings, and they serve to hook them onto the forewing during flight. This means that despite having two pairs of wings, they function as a single pair during flight. And secondly, there is also a highly diverse group of parasitoid wasps, which are actually so minute that their wings, rather than being disc-shaped, are more comb or brush-shaped. They are formed by a very tiny disc and several setae. The reason for this is that at that size, the air is so relatively viscous that despite the hairs being separate, the air does not pass between the hairs. So there you have it, five insect wing facts that hopefully you didn't know about. By the way, whilst this video is not actually sponsored, I do have a little announcement to make. You may have noticed that 14 edutubers and I from the Smart YouTuber Mafia, aka educational YouTubers that you may already be watching, and if you aren't, probably should be watching because you probably really like them. We've been collaborating on a thoughtful subscription box called The Singularity. And the first edition is going to be shipping out in mid-April, I believe the 22nd. It contains all kinds of items and merch. I'm going to say easily my favourite is going to be CGP Grey's Bonnie the Bee plushie. Um, after all of this insect talk, you probably know why. Um, there's also an environmentally friendly bottle from Minute Physics. There are actually a ton of different things. Also, some postcards contributed by yours truly, which I photographed and illustrated myself. So if this sounds like the kind of thing you'd be interested in, you can check it out on the website. If you use the code DRAWCURIOSITY, you'll also get $5 off. This is a physical product, so it's shipping from the US. If you're within the US, shipping is free. If you are ordering from the outside, please check your customs regulation in your country. I don't want any nasty surprises. I've heard there might be an EU fulfillment centre in the future, but that's not the case right now. So, if a thoughtful singularity is something that sounds like something you want, 
then feel free to order before mid-April because if not that's apparently it until June when the next edition comes out and if it's not that's totally fine as well. Um, as always, thank you so much to my incredible Patreons on Patreon for supporting the creation of this content. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.